Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fishing with Rod. Um, we're not doing any fishing today, but stick around. I promise this one will be very, very special. Um, all of you have been asking me to do a feature on, well, many features on behind the scene fishery projects. And this one is pretty special. Um, we're at High Creek um, Community Hatchery and Educational Center um, in Coquitlam. Um, this group entirely run by volunteers has been around for over 20 years. Um, not only have they revived a very tiny urban stream with salmon and various other species, but they also do outreach programs for schools and basically the entire community, just um, educating people about salmon and the importance of the watersheds surrounding us. So we're gonna spend the next few hours with um, the group um, and find out what exactly they're doing to make this work and hopefully that will inspire you to get involved as well. Let's go check it out. So that's a big number, yeah? 2,500? How many salmon do you think come back into the creek when it's time for them to do the spotting? One thing that the High Creek Watershed Society does is a really fantastic outreach program, as you can see behind me. Um, today, we have a group of students coming here to learn more about the hatchery program, as well as the watershed, um, seeing some salmon as well. Um, so unless you work in rivers, work in fisheries, or you actually fish, um, most likely you probably don't know much about salmon and their freshwater habitat, which is, I think is really, really important. Um, people know about it. Um, and that's why programs like this is really, really useful. Or something icky down a storm drain. Okay, now, now we're gonna check out the classroom portion of the hatchery, which is upstairs. They have this really nice looking classroom um, for school groups that come in and learn about salmon. This is amazing. It's, uh, I wish when I was in class, when I was going to school, I could come to a place like this to learn about salmon. This sat in the museum in Port Coquitlam for about uh, eight months. Yeah. One of our members made it as a display yeah. and wanted to make sure that it was inexpensive and recycled material, so just oh, okay. wood pallets. Yeah. And uh, I think great. the city made that for their display and they gave it to us after it was done. And, and April and her uh, then boyfriend, now husband, did all the graphics. They're both artists and uh, I thought, how cool. And her dad's a cabinet maker, so he helped her with the with yeah. this thing. And, you know, cost next to nothing. We just finished the group tour, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. I really, even though I was in the background, I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Good. So this is Jane Peachman um, from the High, uh, High Creek Watershed Society. And, uh, and we're just have, gonna have a little conversation about the group. And um, I, you know, like I told you earlier, I, I'm really interested uh, when it comes to learning the background story of individual stewardship groups. Mm -hmm. um, so would you like to tell us how long High Creek Watershed Society has been around? Oh, it's been, we're on to year 20. Yeah. Um, before that, it was the Hyde Creek Stream Keepers operating out of a bathtub in a guy's backyard okay, on Hyde yeah. Creek. 
uh, was the very first step, mm -hmm. and we've evolved into a society. Uh, the city of Port Coquitlam was gracious and good enough to lease us the land to build a hatchery on, and then we fundraised like crazy to build the building, and the hatchery moved from Ken Rempel's backyard to this location. Wow. Now, this, I was going to say, this building right here, the hatchery and the education center, it's, it's very, very impressive. It's, it's a huge building. And, um, and you, you say this is all done by fundraising yes, we effort? Yes, everything, you know, everything was fundraised. We did it over a period of three years because we didn't, we didn't have the, uh, the money to build all mm -hmm. at once. Uh, my husband had just retired from uh, being a project manager on big construction sites and was very happy to get this project. So he, uh, he'd become a member and decided this was something he could do because it's a basic concrete block building with wood frame top, okay. um, but very, very functional. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been a good. And, and how much money did you have to raise? Uh, the bottom line was we ended up raising over $450,000. Wow. Um, the project came in under budget. I think we were expecting it to be more than that, but mm -hmm. uh, being good construction people in the community, a lot of people stepped forward yeah. and donated. Um, the concrete was donated. Um, the uh, IKEA, we bought the cabinets from them. They donated the tables and chairs because Great. they were just opening. Yeah. Uh, we had so many kind contractors and mm -hmm. people who gave us real good deals on our bills, so we, we came in under budget. The murals that, that decorate the four walls outside of a block, an ugly block mm -hmm. structure, yeah. was painted pale, pale blue, and then uh, <laughs> our friend Kim Hunter came along and did four murals for us, depicting the four seasons at Hyde Creek. Mm -hmm. And yes, it, and it's very interactive. We have worksheets that go along with it. Right. And uh, yeah, the kids love it, and the adults too. The Fraser River salmon have been in the news for quite a bit. And um, we talk about endangered, you know, upper Fraser River Chinook salmon. We talk about Thompson River steelhead, which are down to, you know, down to less than 100 per year. Um, but what's not in the news is, you know, little urban streams like Hyde Creek, um, which don't get a whole lot of fish. And we have many, many um, streams like that in the urbanized area, which are completely lost at one point in the last hundred years. But you slowly bring this creek back, I guess. Yes. Um, have you seen a lot of changes in the last 20 years, a lot of improvements in the last 20 years at High Creek? Yes, there's been a lot of changes and, and mostly good ones. Yeah. I think we, we are impacted by urbanization mm -hmm. somewhat, but the good thing is it's very popular now to be conscious of what's going on in the environment and yeah. that, that's helped us incredibly. Yeah, yeah. This, this area is incredibly busy um, Yes, because I, I used to live just up the hill from here. I've seen the development over the years. Um, so what are some of the challenges which you, you would say that High Creek faces on a daily basis? In the beginning, in 20 years ago, we faced things like creek pollution, and I'm going to say basically from storm drains, some of mm -hmm. it from construction, some of it from natural things like a sand slide way up on top of Burke Mountain yeah. that nobody has any control over. Mm -hmm. um, we very seldom get a call in that our water has been, is toxic, so it's killing fish in the creek and killing fish in the hatchery. We haven't had that happen for about 15 years. So I think that's a positive sign. Mm -hmm. We have less, uh, less problems even with storm drains. They used to, People would dump paint or gasoline or fuel down them thinking that it was, maybe they didn't realize where it was going, yeah. but most of them do end up in creeks. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we, we very seldom get that anymore, and that's a really, it's a good thing. I think that's just part of the educational effort over the years, right? People know about yes. it, right? Yeah. You know, I think most people choose to do the right thing if you, yeah. if you let them know. If you give them the information, they'll, they'll follow the regulations and stuff, right? And so. the education system in our community. I think School District 43 does an excellent job on salmon enhancement. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning when I was teaching, my background is business teaching, not, not science. Yeah. Um, I, was, I knew a lot more than all the kids. Right now the kids are correcting my pronunciation on words, yeah. explaining to me that uh, <laughs> this is how this works with storm drains. Yeah. So it's, that's a really good sign. So that tells me that the education system is working mm -hmm. an overdrive in terms of environmental studies. That's great. Oh, great, excellent, yeah. So how many fish, um, I, so this is a tiny 
it's, it's a pretty small hatchery compared to someone somewhere like the the Chilliwack River hatchery yes. where they produce you know up to millions of fish yeah. um, so how many fish do you spawn per year and how many juvenile salmon do you release well we uh, right now we have 10,000 coho fry in our rearing pond that we released in May mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago we were closer to 20,000 mm -hmm. but the returns have become so strong over the years and I think we started out with 40 or 50,000 so we, our numbers have decreased because the runs, the runs have improved so much. That, that's so that's a good, yeah. a good sign. And we watch, we now clip our fish, the mm -hmm. uh, adipose fin off mm -hmm. the uh, coho, uh, so that we can tell which ones are coming back as hatchery fish. And it's about half and half. There's the wild ones. Um, we still see, we try and net as many wild ones as we can, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's, it's just been good returns, I believe. That's that's fantastic because um, it's that, that's quite a contrary to many other systems um, where we, we've seen declines in some of the species, but you've actually seen an increase. Yes. Um, but would you say so? The fish are naturally, um, I guess, recruiting in the river. They're spawning in the river. Um, are you doing restoration to the stream besides hatchery production? We have well? done. We have um, built two um, rearing ponds off creek rearing ponds okay. on Hyde Creek yeah. one was done about 20 20 22 years ago perhaps yeah. under the stream keepers and we revitalized it two years ago and then this past year we put in another pond and it's for the coho it's uh, to find a place to rear over the summer so the wild fish don't have to rely on Hyde Creek you know I, I actually get a lot of requests a lot of questions from um, individual anglers asking about how they can help out in fisheries and my answer is always you, you can totally come out to one of the one of the groups such as this one to help out and you you have lots of volunteer opportunities um, at the Watershed Society right? Yes we do we yeah. have a lot of volunteers um, we always need more and right now we are looking for people that are uh, handy with buildings mm -hmm. um, we own the building, but we lease the land from the city of Port Coquitlam for a very reasonable rate. It's a great, a great setup we have with our community, um, but it's a building and it needs, uh, we have water systems in here and sometimes we need help with that, with electrical work. Um, so we're always looking for expertise and people who are also just simply interested in the fish culture and the aquaculture. So yeah, yeah. We're, we're open for everyone. Yeah. This definitely provides a lot of opportunities for I guess students who want to get into the fishery as mm -hmm. a career, you can come out and get some really hands-on experience um, spawning fish and feeding fish, mm -hmm. things like that, right? Um, for anglers who want to help out, just want to give back, this is a great, um, I would say it's a hobby, right? It's, it's it kind of it's kind of fun. It because is. It, yeah. it's, it's a good social group and mm -hmm. our, our value is that nobody is obliged to come. So if you're a yeah. member here, you don't need to show up every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Yeah. You come when you have some free time and yeah. help, and if you're a member, you get emails from the group saying, we desperately need people to come out on Saturday because we're doing a fish take, or mm -hmm. we would like people to come out and help us do some, we do stream monitoring, yeah. uh, salmon counting, so we're mm -hmm. always looking for people to give us a hand with those. Yeah, yeah. But you come when it's when you exactly, have time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So you're putting like a couple hours a week or a couple hours a month. Yeah. Um, every little bit helps. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, and it's very gratifying when you put in the work and you see the salmon come back. Oh, it is. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a lot of fun, trust me. Yeah, yeah it's been good. Yeah. And if you fish, um, you were saying that the, you have a lot of fish, uh, I guess, volunteers who fish as well, right? Yes. They're dedicated fishermen. So if you come out and volunteer, you can probably get some fishing tips on where to go fishing. Yes, stuff, stuff. exactly. <laughs> right? so. I would say the bulk of our members are fishermen in some way, shape or form. Okay. Uh, whether yeah. just casual or mm -hmm. some real die-hard fishermen here. Yeah. Uh, and they are very impressed with the beginnings of the fish. Because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that's not normally what you look at. Or the ending with the spawning is interesting. Yeah. When yeah. you're involved in it, it's, it's something else. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you, Jean. Um, so if people want to find out more about the group, they, I guess they can go to the website. Yes. And there is a Facebook page and an Instagram page, I believe so. Yes. And uh, we'll put all the information on the bottom for you all to check out so you can come out and help out and even just come out here, take a tour and, and uh, check out the fish. So yes. We're open every Saturday morning from 9.30 to noon. 
Is anyone can drop by? Anyone just drop in and see what we're doing, oh. what projects we're working on. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, yeah. Rod.